Welcome to Tiki Central Canada. Ever wonder what's in that cool, refreshing drink that you just have to have on that hot summer's day? Mmm, me too. Picture a man going on a journey beyond sight and sound. He has left society. He has entered Tiki Central with palm trees, beach sand, blue skies, and God, get me a drink now. Here are your hosts, Craig, Cam, and Paula, and their wacky views in drinks, life, and maybe information. Hey folks, and hey, how we doing? It's Craig here from Tiki Central Canada, and I'll be your bartender, mixologist, and host for the hour. And hey, so uh, this is a uh, second part two to Prohibition for the uh, new year. Mm-hmm. And we have Cam. Here's Cam. How hey are you doing, Cam? I'm How's doing it well. I'm doing well. Mostly recovered from New Year's. I noticed that Cam's doing the anti-Prohibition. He's uh, doing the other way. He's trying to make sure, you know, Prohibition does end inside the studio here. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, I figure, you know, somebody's got to keep their keep up their end of the bargain. That's right. It's in his contract. I'm not sure who I made the bargain with, but regardless, <laughs> I'm... Uh, that's a I'm, deal with the devil, right? <laughs> I'm sipping pretty. Uh, also, too, we have Mark here because we're going to be doing Mark Adventures, and hey. we're going to talk about a new tiki bar. Another oh, tiki hi, bar. Yet another tiki bar. Yes. And what Excellent. bar are we doing today? Death or glory. Death or glory. We're talking about this before. <laughs> it's almost like, if you remember back then, the Mortal Kombat hmm. game where you mm-hmm. had the, uh, every every character had their one move at the end. Finish him. Fatality, right? Sub-Zero wins. <laughs> That sounds like Mark's, uh, Mark's vacation. You know, that was the theme of it, death or glory. Either uh, he did make it out of the bar, or yeah, he's glorified he came out of the bar. Yeah, uh, yeah. there was me going to all the friggin' cruise ship friggin' shows. Oh, uh, God! Yeah. I'm going to die now. That's because your wife wanted you to go, right? That's a, uh, I no. didn't say anything. Uh, <laughs> and that's now, it. for the comedic stylings of ventriloquist, Jeff Dunham. <laughs> no! Oh, yeah. Come and see our band where they play jazz in the atrium. <laughs> hey, that's during Prohibition. There you go. So you got some Prohibition music. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, as, 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 as much as I'm enjoying this uh, musical interlude. Um, uh, but usually it's Mark. Usually it's him. You know, it's just funny. Yeah, yeah, no, that's true. I'm, I'm uh, feeling a bit robbed here. But, uh, Craig. Yes. What What is the tasty beverage we're talking about? So the tasty beverage you guys tried today is the Bee Knees, which is actually a prohibition drink that was made during mm-hmm. that time. And it's still a classic cocktail, as Mark sucks back the one less drop he's got left in his glass. Mine's gone. Mm-hmm. It's gone. Um, yeah, it was actually made during prohibition and still actually exists today. Yeah. Well, no, and I, I quite enjoyed this drink. It was very tasty. Yeah, because you like you like tart stuff. I know. I, I I definitely do. I like my tarts. Yeah, yeah. Um, so just just for our listeners, could yes. you uh, just remind me of of what's the deal with this whole prohibition thing in the jig? Uh, so yeah, what it is actually, the prohibition is the 18th Amendment in the United States, and we kind of briefly had it in Canada for a while. Mm. Uh, banning of alcohol, so you basically couldn't uh, distribute it, you couldn't manufacture it, couldn't export it, mm-hmm. and uh, you couldn't yeah sell it. And so Canada had a little bit of a brief kind of. Uh, prohibition period. Uh, Mark, we said on the last one was like kind of, if I remember correctly, it was like 19... I think it was 27. 27 it went to? It was actually two by, by province by province, right? It wasn't like every province. That's right. Some of them would go right away. I think it was Alberta and a couple other ones just kept her going. Right. Uh, Especially Ontario because we actually, sold, we actually yeah. we sold whiskey to the yeah. states. Yeah, mm-hmm. as I said, from 1916 through 1927. Mm-hmm. However, exactly. it was legal to manufacture and export Alcohol. That's right. No. So we kept on doing that. No. Well, that's good. I mean, even though, you know, it's like, well, it's poison for Canadians, but uh, the rest well, of the Well, those guys down there. The suckers yeah. down there, eh? We, uh. Maybe we should do the whole show talking like this, eh? Hmm. Yeah, maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> you just can't follow a theme, can you? Know? <laughs> uh, so why, why Prohibition? So what happened, how, how this started? Yeah. So what ended up happening was that two major groups, the Anti-Saloon League, which we talked about in the last show, mm-hmm. and the Women's Christian Temperance Union was another group, 
And so what these two were doing was trying to basically prohibit alcohol being sold and also close down all the taverns and bars, mm -hmm. uh, either due to, because of society and uh, when men and women were having issues at home right? Yeah. or because of like a workplace, immigration, unions, you name it. Basically, there was all kinds of reasons wow. for it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But also during the war... So the Germans... World War One. World War One. Mm. So, well, obviously, we're war, we're, the United States were in war with Germany. Mm -hmm. Germany was seen, to the Americans' eyes, as the beer product. So the beer mm. that we know today mm. Mm -hmm. was a German immigrant uh, product. Yeah, hence Budweiser. Budweiser. Mm -hmm. So, An was it uh, Anaheim? Or? Anheuser. 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 Bush. Yeah. So, yeah, so they're basically... Uh, a whole bunch of, these... of faceless loggers. L-A-G-E-R-S, <laughs> just to be clear. There we go. <laughs> exactly, anyway, yeah. Well, yeah. actually, during Prohibition, certain things were changing, had to change their name. Like hmm. certain locations and hotels had to change their name because they had a German background. Oh, wow, um, okay. Even I've, products. I believe the town of Kitchener used to be called Berlin. Oh. Kidding me. There you go. Wow. Yes. Uh, I mean, at least it wasn't called Kaiser von Wilhelm the Sad, but uh, but we'll change the name, but we'll keep your Oktoberfest. Thank yeah, you. sure. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. We'll keep your Oktoberfest. Oh, come on! I mean, those Germans had some good ideas, you know. Uh, schnitzel. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> schnitzel. Uh, oh boy, we're going to hell. Um, uh, we've explained, or you've explained sort of where Prohibition came from and that kind of thing. Yes. And you've also indicated that it ended in the early 30s. Yes, 1933, actually, to be yeah. specific. But how or why did it end? So what happened was in December 5th, 1933, Prohibition ends. So the 21st Amendment came into play. And what it was is that... So several, they had to... They had to... <laughs> they, so they actually had to do... They had to, like, do an amendment for an amendment. Basically. That's right. An amendment to say reversal of the other amendment. Okay. Uh. <laughs> And actually, oh. the Eighteenth Amendment was the very first amendment to actually be reversed. Oh, really? Of all the amendments. Okay. I wonder if any others have been reversed since. I don't know. I have yeah. To, yeah, I'm not quite sure. Well, about maybe that. some of our American listeners could help us out. Yeah, there you go. Hey, throw throw us a line. There we yeah. go. We'll send that to our research staff. Mm -hmm. Oh, there we go. That would be me and you. <laughs> it's like hello. <laughs> <laughs> like we have we have, we have a, like a real small room with a bunch of nerds on a computer going, "Well, yeah. let me figure that out for you, Craig." <laughs> well, uh, technically, it's. Uh, uh, <laughs> So anyway, what ended up happening was that, so when in the 21st Amendment came into play, mm -hmm. every state actually had their own way of to abide their laws. Sure. So what it was is that every state has a way of running that amendment. So, so there are certain states where they're like, well, no, we're going to like say just wine and, and beer only. Mm -hmm. There's another state where the beer can only be 33.5% or lower. Sure. Okay. Um, also, too, inside the states, there's counties dry, and we actually still have dry counties in mm -hmm. the states. And one of the most famous ones is the Lynchburg, Tennessee, mm -hmm. which actually is where Jack Daniels is made. And it's a dry county. It's a dry county. So get this. Everybody that works in that I county. I feel about that. I know. Everybody yeah. in that county works for Jack Daniels, and you can't drink whiskey in that county. You have to go outside the county, purchase your whiskey, and then bring it back in. Because remember, you can, you can, still, you can still export. Sorry, yeah, you can't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you can you know sell I mean? it outside of your territory, but you can't. You can't manufacture it and yeah. sell it outside mm. your territory. Once again, this feels a lot like asbestos in Canada. <laughs> uh, it all stinks. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, mm. And leaving me with an itchy sensation. Yeah, 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 man. <laughs> Who doesn't love fibrosis? Um, so the drink we're talking about is the bee's knees. That's right. So where did it where did it did originate? It how did it start, et cetera, et cetera? Yeah. So let's talk about how it started. So the bee's knees actually was invented in the early 20th century by Frank Meyer and the who was actually the head bartender. He turned into a spy at the Ritz Bar in Paris. Sweet. How cool is that? Yeah. I know you're a bartender and a spy. And a spy. Now just to clarify, because I'm a bartender myself, a lot of bartenders actually know a lot about their clientele. Mm -hmm. So they know their names, they so know their jobs. Yeah. You're telling us you're a spy? I'm a spy. Yeah. Yeah. Mark, you're God. busted, man. I feel like 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 if that <laughs> if if I was Frank Meyer on my business cards, it would be like B S P. <laughs> Frank Meyer B S P. You know? <laughs> oh. So so who was this character, this Frank uh, Meyer? So Frank Meyer actually during World War II would spend time in helping the French resistance. And the British spies, La resistance. the resistance, and the British spies as well, to conspire to actually Hitler's assassination attempt. Wow. All the way to that, yeah. This is actually why he was continuing to work at the Ritz Bar. 
Jeez, so he basically busy. conveyed information. Why hasn't there been a movie about this? Yeah. Well, it's, 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 Casablanca it's, it's, it's almost ways? like uh, uh, Glorious Bastards, there, yeah. for a chunk of it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So basically he just gathered information and he passed it on to the French resistance and the British spies. So, yeah. by the way, Bees Knees, because we remember we're talking about Prohibition time. Mm-hmm. So jazz music obviously was big during Prohibition. So Bees Knees actually in jazz lingo means great. Excellent or the best. Yo, the bee's knees. The bee's knees. Hey, yeah. you are. Yeah, man. Yeah. 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 You have to sort of say it in that kind of way, right? Yeah. So, bee's knees actually was invented as a way to hide the scent and flavor of poor quality homemade spirits. We talked about bathtub gin. So, a lot. Mm-hmm. What ended up was that we got to mid prohibition, and even the good stuff was gone. The right. demand was so high that even the good stuff that they could bring in from other countries was sure. basically not happening. So then, next thing you know, like two thirds or the majority of the stuff that they were selling, even to the rich people, was pretty was vile. pretty vile and, and manufactured actually in the states. Right, right. Uh, I remember actually I was reading one spot there where like there were one point they were selling a twelve year old scotch and actually it was only thirty days old. Ugh. So you know what I mean? It's like, yeah. mm, that's good eating. <laughs> yeah, they just marinate a kilt in it for a while. And, <laughs> I the Scottish. Uh, it's Scotch, all right. If it's not uh, Scotch, it's crap. I... <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, w- w- what actually makes up the bee's knees? I quite enjoyed this drink. Yeah. Um, uh, it was really nice and citrusy. I was the weird baby that liked lemon. Yep. Um, so, what's in it? Yeah, so this actually is a very simple drink. It is three ingredients. So, we got two ounces of gin. The gin that I actually used for this is Muskoka gin. That's right. Muskoka mm. does make a gin. Good old Muskoka. So, yeah, you're looking for basically a dry gin. You don't want anything that's got a lot of floral hints or notes to it. You mm-hmm. want something that's basically got a London dry gin kind of process. Mm-hmm. One ounce of lemon juice. I mm. use lime. I, that's okay. just me. Well, I, I, I really remember. liked it. I, I thought it was lemon, but... Uh, yeah, no, I use lime. I, I use lime all the time. And then one ounce of honey syrup. So the honey syrup is like our simple syrup, where you're adding honey instead of mm-hmm. sugar. Well, and you'd indicated uh, previously that... Yeah, so the honey, what it is, is actually smoothed out the taste like, like of the bad gin. Really right? nasty alcohol. The nasty the alcohol. Reason. So right. that's why this drink was actually invented, basically to kind of mask the, the, the gin we're getting in mm-hmm. from different places. Mm-hmm. Yes. So uh, shake, stir, right. glassware. Right, so this actually is going to be shaken with ice and then strained. Mm-hmm. Actually, we, again, like we talked about, double strained as before. Okay. So double strained. Right, into we a, did that in the first episode. Exactly. So yep. we're going to shake this in ice, and then we're going to double strain into a chilled uh, cocktail glass. You could easily use our little a coupe or our little margarita glass. That's what I used for this one. It was a martini glass. A uh, martini glass. Right. That's right. So yeah. either a coupe glass or a martini glass, and yeah. then garnish with an orange twist. I didn't do the orange twist. You have your nose. Yeah, what the we hell, never, man? There's no do. orange twist in my drink. I know. Yeah. We never it's do garnish. We never Who do earns? You know, Who yeah. earns? But actually, yeah. so here's some cool facts in all the research I did about the bee's knees. And one of the questions, actually, in one of the, the topics I was reading, or one of the paragraphs I was reading, is does bees actually have knees? In fact, yes, they do. Mm-hmm. Bees actually have a segment of their leg consisting of parts that have joints. And so between the joints, it actually is considered knees. Huh. They have hair on those knees, which actually collect the pollen. And that uh, is... Oh, yeah. So well, bees yeah. And then they look like they have leg warmers. Have yeah. knees. Hmm. Welcome to Mark's Adventures. So we want to welcome back Mark to the show. Uh, obviously, during the holidays, he did a lot of traveling and hit a lot of tiki bars. I totally hit one. He oh, hits like hi, five. Mark. Yeah. <laughs> it's, well, it's, 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 well, you're only there for a few days. Lots gotta... of research quotation marks. That's right. There we go. So what bar are we talking about today? Uh, there's a bar called Death or Glory. Ah, it's very a, cool. It's just north it's, of Fort Lauderdale. It's a pretty Fort amazing Lauderdale. name for a bar, quite honestly. Yeah. Death That's, or Glory. Yeah. It's like, you know they're serious. Yeah. So you said there's actually an interesting story about this, um, how you found hmm. it and its origin. Just a little bit wordy. All right. The, the adventure started... <laughs> Mark, wordy? Come on. No, I mean, like, more so. The, uh, the adventure started for us a few years ago when we visited a place called the Creepy Tiki Bar and Lounge. Creepy Tiki. Yeah. Sadly, defunct now. Half oh, of, no. Half of it. It was situated very close to the cruise port in Fort Lauderdale. If anybody's taking a cruise out of Fort Lauderdale, you would have yes. driven by it. So or, if you, or, or if you're coming from the airport, you would have driven by it. Right, so it gets a lot of traffic. Yeah. I got you. It's in an industrial area, but it was mostly a place for um, garage bands, surf bands, and that kind of stuff. Plus, oh, very cool. tattoo parlor. 
<laughs> but, <laughs> well, yeah, you have to have a tiki bar with a tattoo Which is parlor. extremely cool. But so, like, kind of locals? Like, like the local yes. bands and this kind of yeah. thing? Okay, cool. Yeah, so it was an yeah. important venue for that sure. genre. Yeah. Actually, Fort Lauderdale really sucks for live music. Okay. I know people yeah. in Fort Lauderdale going, no, we got... Nothing. <laughs> Wait for it. And just a bunch of thrashers. Yeah. And, yeah. yeah. So they have places for them to play. Sure. That's cool. Yeah. All right. All right, cool. It's a bit like the Dom. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Okay. With real drinks. Ah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Hey, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Fighting words. Not with me, but yeah. <laughs> the Dom. I know yeah. a lot of people at the Dom are kind of punchy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. They hit you with your quirt. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. At any rate. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, so we went there and we first encountered Amy Harrison. Uh, she was the bartender extraordinaire that was there. Yes. But we got there too early. Then we found out there was a, this art and, and cocktail show that she had to go make cocktails for art, which was really kind of cool when you think about it. Yep. But there was going to be this other bartender, she said, was going to be there, and you can stay if you want. want. Mm. So we left. And mm. Uh, mm. so we went off to a, another tiki bar there. There's only one other one at the time, and that's the Mai Kai, which we'll talk about so, another so time. The, the Mai Kai. 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 Okay. Yeah, we K- talked about that one before briefly. Yeah, we just mentioned it along, yeah. so we're like we're yeah. leading people. We're leading people to the Mai Kai. That's right. Understood. It, yeah, is yeah. The, it is the last temple. End all to be all. It is the last temple. I it's gotcha. The, the, the Tiki Temple. I That's gotcha. right. Yeah. Any rate, so fast forward a year. What? We go forward to go to the Creepy Tiki again. Yeah, it's go to the Creepy Tiki. We get there, and we meet Keith Popjoy, the bartender. And he says, sorry. Great last name. Yeah. We're right. closed tonight. No. He says we're in a... like, well, then why are you here, you jerk? (laughs) Yeah. Well, he was getting ready to go to a competition for bartenders, and it was a semifinals. Oh, okay. Mm. Right? And so, but other people other people were there, too, waiting to get in. Yeah. And it was none other than Rod Moore, the owner of the Shameful Tiki in Vancouver. Ah, cool. Now, that is wild. Yeah. Rod Noor. I need to remember that name because yeah. I, I, I was, I was uh, when I was in Vancouver uh, yeah. recently seeing my family, I was thinking of going, like, and dragging some friends and stuff. I mean, we were far too drunk to make any attempt to get out of the house. But, you know, the feeling was there, but I didn't know the names. So yeah, Rob. Yeah, yeah. Rob Noor. Moore. Moore. Yeah. Moore. Okay. Yeah. There we go. And uh, he also is also in a band as well. That nice. plays of course. Yeah. That plays there regularly. Nice. He also has a gin joint, too, there. Uh, oh. That just opened up in Vancouver. Oh, oh wow. Oh, so there you go. There you go. For all you people out in Vancouver. Yeah, which is really cool. Well, I don't know if you know this about me, fellas, but uh, <laughs> I do enjoy my gin. Yes, I know that. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So we went back the next night. Yep. And Keith uh, gave us, he had won the, the semifinals. Good for him. And so he gave us a whole bunch of drinks for free. Because he was so happy. Because he was so happy and we came back. Yeah. We were going to stay because uh, Rod and them left go to the Mai Kai. Yep. But they had left their t-shirt that they bought. And it was the last t-shirt that Creepy Tiki ever had. In hindsight, maybe we should have just... No, it wasn't even close to fitting me. The uh, <laughs> So we took it to the Mai Kai <laughs> and gave it back to them. And so we became fast friends. Aww. Anyway, most of the tiki decor actually belonged to the tattoo parlor. That's mm. an interesting fact. Okay. Yeah, I know. Mm-hmm. But then it closed. Wow, sad mm. face. Oh, no. But from the ashes of the Creepy came death or glory. He said the name actually has some sort of significance, right? Death or yeah, glory. Yeah, it does. It's um, we'll get to it here just in a second. It's from a uh, what's his name, Keith. Uh, he had a uh, competition. Yes. And uh, he's doing another competition, so he had a like a tune-up. So he had a pop-up bar, mm-hmm. and he called it Death or Glory, his pop-up bar. Mm. So that's where the name came from, which mm. is a song from the Clash. Ah, from there Colin. we go. Nice. The About Clash. aging rockers. So w- one of the things I've I've begun to or I, I have. I have begun to notice. Uh, begun? Began? Begun. <laughs> I've begun to notice. Doesn't begin, sound right. Begin the beginning. I have started to notice. <laughs> there we go. Um, is that there There does seem to be a fair amount of crosstalk or like cross-pollination between like kind of punk and surf and tiki culture. Is is that like? Am I just sort of pulling that out of my butt, or is that no, something no. that? No, no, that yeah. no, your yeah. butt, your butt's fine. Okay, well, uh, okay. <laughs> uh, that's a relief. <laughs> no, the uh, bars, yeah, yeah and in more ways than one. Let me tell yeah. you, folks. no, there is yeah. definitely. Yeah. Uh, yeah, there's mostly the heavy surf, and then the, yeah, and then also the uh, rockabilly. Sure, goes yeah. in there too. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, all starting to become like it's not tiki, but it's a part of tiki. Understood. Well, right. actually, if you yeah, listen to on iTunes, yeah. uh, Tiki Essentials, yeah. it's a very collaboration of Tiki music, like Hawaiian and Polynesian, but yeah. also, too, there's a bit of punk rock in there. Mm-hmm. 
and a little bit of uh, get the harder thrashier stuff yeah so, there's, yeah, there's, yeah there's, there's a tie in there for sure very yeah. cool yeah mm. so that's mm. where that came from hmm all right, it's uh, it's located about an hour north of Fort Lauderdale in a place called Delray Beach. And it's a partnership of Isaac Grillo, one time named Ultimate Miami Bartender. Ultimate! Ultimate. <laughs> Which is just kind of like the best possible thing to put on your business card. Yeah. Uh, along with his wife, April Devona, of the very highly regarded uh, Miami bar called Repor. It's one of the places where the uh, mm-hmm. the establishment, or not the establishment, uh, what do you call it? The local bartenders all go to. Mm-hmm. Right, so it's industrial mm-hmm. bar. That's the word. Right. Yeah. Ding, yeah. ding, 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 ding. Yeah. Industrial. Ding, 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 ding. Do like industry nights. Yeah. 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 That kind yeah. of stuff. And Amy, the owner of the Creepy Tiki, yeah. uh, combined to uh, open up this bar. Oh, very cool. Death yeah. or Glory is also the motto of the Queen's Royal Lancers, by the way. I don't think it's going to be that one. I don't think so either. <laughs> so is this a tiki bar or a speakeasy bar? Well, it's a historic building. Okay. And it's called the Falcon House. Oh, very cool. Not the, not the Millennium Falcon House, just the Falcon House. Mm. It was built in... So 19, close. Yeah. yeah. It was built in 1925, so it's right in go. Prohibition. Prohibition times. Mm-hmm. That's what we're talking about here. Yep, yep. Mm-hmm. And it's furnished and decorated in prohibition ear items. Oh, cool. Like so the inside of the house, inside of the house is like little rooms all set off. Mm. So you can have like little private groups there, bigger groups over there, plus the main bar and all that kind of stuff. It's uh, very cool. Yeah, it's very cool inside. Mm. And uh, a lot of the drinks are modern, but throwbacks like classics, right? Yeah, that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. It's mostly a whiskey and gin based, uh, but there's definite nod to the Prohibition era. Cocktails, yeah, very current, really cool atmosphere. Apparently, it also has a pop up store. A pop-up store? That sells bar supplies for the local bartenders. Oh, very cool. Oh, nice. There yeah. you go. Yeah, yeah. But it's not quite as speakeasy, per se. Yes. It says, you, if you don't enter the building, but if you go around to the right, yes. you'll suddenly see uh, a canopy, yes. a thatch canopy. And if you go back, there's a fairly large open area with wooden tables, like stand-up tables and a couple of picnic tables, and then the bar. And that's where you find all your rum drinks. Ah, okay, very with cool. A, with a full mm-hmm. tiki menu. Nice. So it's uh, like basically from the front, you can't yeah. really tell it's there. Yeah. Decor-wise, uh, it's uh, very little tiki yep. to speak of. Hmm. But the outdoor area is a homage to the rum runners of the 1920s. There you go. That's Prohibition. cool. Yeah, I like cool. that. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, which is, of course, the same time the Falcon House was built. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Very cool. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So what are some interesting cocktails you saw there? As expected, they're very good with the uh, people, well, yeah. that, people that are involved. I don't think here. you go to a bad bar, do you? No, I don't. <laughs> Well, I mean, with the <laughs> ultimate Miami thing. And bad bars, bad bars. <laughs> what are you going to do? What, you yeah, gonna what do? are you going to do? <laughs> <laughs> we start off with the, uh, the Mai Tai. Yep. Trader Vic Mai Tai. That's like a staple. Yeah, you got to mm-hmm. yeah. start up with that. Yeah. There you go. And then we went to um, the, some of the local concoctions. Okay, the first one was called Here Today, Gone Tomorrow. And it had Age bah- Bahan, B-A-J-A-N, yep. rum, which is from the Barbados. Yep. Overproof Jamaican rum. Oof. Falernum, Ooh. pomegranate, lime, pineapple, oh, bitters. Oh, there's the pineapple again. Yep. And absinthe. And absinthe. Woo, oh, boy. absinthe. So you got the anise in there as well. Amazing. Yeah, yeah. It's, wow. Yeah, killer drink. Yeah. Killer drink. I killer drink. So. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then we tried another one of the local ones. Uh-huh. It was called the Passion of Barbados. Again, with the aged Bahan rum. Yep. Chinola passion fruit liqueur. Whatever okay. that is. Sounds good. Sounds great. Yeah. Allspice, honey, vanilla, lemon, grapefruit, and bitters. Wow. So allspice and vanilla. So this is, again, mm. here we go from so your sweetness and then yeah. your bitterness and a bit yeah. of a bite in between. Yeah. 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 So it's a really cool place. They even have a more a nod to the rock thing because they have a big non sign. They stop making sense, which is a, a homage to Talking Heads. Nice. And food? The food is really good. The burgers are to die for and that kind of stuff. Yeah. But there's one thing that you got to try when you're there. It's an appetizer. And it's crispy chickpeas. Mm, Garbanzo okay. beans. You deep fry your crispy chickpeas and cover them with Cheetos dust. <laughs> okay. Cam, this sounds like a bit of your... You uh, had me at Cheetos dust. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. And it comes like in this big, long uh, banana type boat there, and you just kind of just pick at these things. And, All I can think oh, of is like, wow. how does that happen? How does someone like, you know, there's like a drunken night somewhere, and like, hey, guys, let's do some fried chickpeas and a some drunken Cheetos. genius night, <laughs> exactly. I think is what you were trying to say. You know oh, what yeah. I mean? Like, how does yeah. that even come into play? Oh, oh yeah. So a great bar. If you're up in uh, Fort Lauderdale, you got to head up to Delray Beach. That is awesome. Definitely. And like, 
like I said, so because it's a speakeasy, so you have to, I guess, know the address to kind of find it. No, no, Death or Glory. It's like the the, the Falcon House as well. Death or Glory itself is not a speakeasy. Right, it's, it's just a bar. The corner. Just right, a, exactly. If you yes. want the rum drinks, you got to yeah. go around. Ah, uh, gotcha. Okay, okay, cool. No, because an example, like when you go to like the Chainful Tiki Room in Toronto, you will can walk right by it. I mean, you've been there. You can walk right by it because it's literally a white wall with a white door. There's yeah. no signs. There's nothing. So you, I've, first time I walked by it like twice. Yeah. Like oh. Oh, there's the bar. There it mm-hmm. is. Okay. Mm-hmm. So it's a tiki speakeasy. That was, yeah. So that's cool. Yeah. Awesome. So another cool bar to, uh, we'll add to Mark's page for sure with all the details and some pictures. Absolutely. I hope, yeah, for yeah. sure. It'd be great. And uh, it, it was, yeah. So it's funny. So during the holidays when he's, do, when he's doing all these adventures and research in quotations, mm. he's sending me pictures. Hey, Craig, check this out. Here's what I'm drinking today. But literally, he Pictures th- of pictures? <laughs> Did you know? I, I did, did not. not. Oh, very cool. So let's talk about some more cool facts about Prohibition since it is the 100th year uh, anniversary this year. And uh, let's talk about some things that actually that came out of Prohibition on a positive side. So here's some uh, cool facts about that. First one, beer cans. So beer cans were actually were invented during Prohibition because back then your refrigeration hmm. systems weren't exactly high. You had to get like an sure, icebox. Sure, yeah, get, yeah. Whatever. And people were drinking more at home. So what ended up happening was that because the bars and taverns weren't selling beer or alcohol... You would drink home, you'd, you you have your bathtub gin or your beer that you bossy bought, mm-hmm. black market, and you take it home. So more people were drinking at home, and therefore the beer can came into play because, like, well, since you have a, not a, a big refrigeration system at home, this is a way of keeping it cold. Hmm. Exactly. And also, too, so movies actually had sound. So before that, all these guys, again, were coming from work and going into the taverns and bars and then going home and crashing. Sure. Well, now that the bars and taverns weren't there, more and more people were looking for some other ways of entertaining themselves. So right. The so they go to the movie got theater. More popular. And the movie industry said, well, since there's more and more demand for the movies now and more and more people are going to movies, let's up our technology and sound came into play. Oh, wow. Okay. So, so basically. Prohibition gave the like the Hollywood the the movie industry like the financial kind of base because or there was a demand for it, right? yeah because there's all these bored non. In other words, people. instead of having ten people watching a movie, the whole yeah. place is packed, right? Wow, and they wanted the talkies. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, isn't it ironic that like you know in the modern era, I spent a lot of time smuggling booze into movie theaters, <laughs> <laughs> or you could be like Graham, uh, you could be like a Kramer there. Sir, is that a latte in your pocket? Is that a latte in your pocket? <laughs> it was too hot. The coffee was too hot. Yeah. <laughs> uh, smuggling liquor into concerts. Uh, yeah. Oh, my God. Uh, it's tried so, and true. Tried, I, tested, and oh true. Oh, God. So yeah. I have to tell you the story. So, like a drunk. Is, back I mean, then, rock. Yeah. So back <laughs> in, the, in the, the late 80s, early 90s, there was like these, a lot of these bus tours would go to, because in Ottawa, maybe some concerts didn't come to Ottawa, like ACDC or whatever Sure, it was. so they go to like Toronto or Montreal. So there'd be bus packages where yeah. you go on a bus and then they drive you to Montreal and then you go see the concert and they drive you back. Well, for the longest time, you were allowed to drink on these buses. You're allowed to bring booze on the bus. Mm-hmm. So we go to one, and I'm pretty sure it was ACDC, and we're in line to get on the bus and then the driver informs everyone like, hey, because of new regulations, there's no alcohol allowed on the bus. Oh, boy. So we're like, oh my god! How much vomit did so, he have to clean up? <laughs> I, I don't know. So what we did is we took the basically the bottles and we put them in. We had like winter jackets because oh, you didn't time. just chug them. No, no, we put them in our pockets of our winter jackets and yeah. walked in and he you know open up your jacket. So we open up our jacket, of course, yeah. and uh, nothing in there. No harm, no foul, right? Yeah. So then we get to the back. We of course ran to the back and sat in the back last row of, of the bus. Yeah, yeah, crack them. And open. so then he's also he's he's inspecting. He's walking down the aisles and checking people. So then we did is we took them out of our, our jackets. And then sat on them. So we put them underneath, our, our, underneath us and yeah. we sat on them. Yeah. So, so there, you know, the bus is going along. We're having our beers in the back and everything else. And at one point, this guy comes back to use the bathroom because the bathroom was obviously over in the back of the bus. Mm. And he's like, just let you know that the bus driver knows you guys have booze back here. And he says, just to keep it down and keep it quiet. You know, because you're here, we're thinking like, oh, we got away with it, guys. Yeah, yeah, this is yeah awesome. Yeah. He totally, he had you. And like, you can hear the. And the bad thing is, like, my my buddy next to me, because they're beer bottles, like bottles, right? Oh, like clinking around, clang, 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 and, clang, oh, and I'm like, boy. dude, like you're killing yeah. it, man. We're gonna get busted for sure. So yeah, like I said, someone came back to use the bathroom, and he's like, look, man, the bus driver knows that you guys got beer back here. Just you know, keep it, keep the tone yeah, yeah. down, right? Don't Whatever, be an right? asshole. Yeah, you know. But it was like, oh my god, <laughs> it's just the weirdest I, scenario. I I have a, a, a an instance. I was uh, living away 
from home for, I think, the second time. Like, you know, I wasn't living in residence at the university. I was living at a buddy's place just off university. And he and I decided to do a, <laughs> to do a like, <laughs> home winemaking course. And so I had, like, 30 bottles of red and 30 bottles of white. And I was, you know, spreading the love around. And I smuggled two bottles of wine into a movie. <laughs> <laughs> He's clogging like wine in a movie. Yeah, yeah. So I finished the first one, and I was doing all right, but then I kicked it. And so the movie goes to a quiet part, and all you hear is clink, 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 uh, busted yeah. yeah i remember taking one of those bus tours right and you know we've got the, the mickey in our pants you know the front of our pants yeah, yeah. Like, look, at, look at us we're so cool yeah. and some guy comes on the bus he's got a full too far <laughs> <laughs> and everybody just goes ah. <laughs> like, seriously he's like, he's like what <laughs> <laughs> and everybody starts pulling the bottles yeah. Out. Yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. really we could have done that in the first place uh, oh man uh, yeah. oh god so good cool so, a couple other things that came out of that, speedboats and cars. So, NASCARs and speedboats that we know today actually started off in Like sports cars. Yeah, sports cars. Okay, not right. cars. Yeah, like sports cars, fast cars, right? Yeah, 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 okay. So, fast cars and fast boats, the so speedboats, huh. actually came from Prohibition because these guys were like rum runners and moot bootleggers. And sure, and they had to... run the law, right? Sure, yeah. So, that was like, that came from... Now those jerks yeah. have helicopters. Such BS. Yeah. I know. Yeah, right? apparently... Uh, one of the other things I read was the uh, the, the number of motorboat licenses <laughs> increased exponentially oh, sure. at the start. Yeah. yeah. That's right. I have a motorboat. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I've got 10 motorboats. Sir, you have 10 motorboats? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah. Yeah, like fishing. Well, my hired goons, I mean, um, farmhands. <laughs> my, my cousins. All my cousins to, need yeah. a boat, you know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, obviously, jazz music came out of it. Jazz music became a very popular music back then, exploded on, on the mm-hmm. market because of speakeasy bars. So speakeasy bars came into play. Mm-hmm. We talked about that. Jazz clubs. Jazz clubs, yeah. yeah. Here's a cool one because there was no taverns and bars, soda shops. So, you know, we, you know, go get a milkshake. Like pop tates from Archie. You know, like milkshake and it'd be a jukebox and you put your, you know, play your 25 cents, you play your favorite song on there or whatever. Back in those days, it was a nickel. It's a How? nickel for your music, man. Yeah. Mm. Um, also, too, baseball on the radio. The very first baseball game on the radio played in a soda shop because hmm. back then radios were too expensive to have at home for personal use. Soda shops would have a radio there, and the first baseball game was recorded and pl- obviously aired mm. uh, during that time. So can I just interject here for a second? Yeah. Like, I, I find all this, like, really super interesting. Yeah. But also, if you kind of take a bird's eye view of it... Really what it suggests is is that once the booze was taken away, everybody was super bored and had to find other things to entertain themselves. Exactly. And industries kind of sprung up around them. Exactly. So one of the ones, actually, this is the weirdest one. So I was listening to this documentary on Prohibition. So sports, like on the radio or whatever, became more Like spectator more sports. Kind spectator of sports. Yeah. yeah, but the weirdest thing was the weirdest was the sports. And yet now like, spectator sports are known for drunk jerks. No, but it's, it's spectator sports like like table tennis, you know, and ping pong. And, the uh, drunkest sport of all. You know what I mean? <laughs> like all these sports that you would yeah. never watch on ESPN or well, it's TSN. Like darts. Like, like, I mean, at the Earl, they, they, they show darts on TV. Like... <laughs> <laughs> well, you're from England. That's a uh, yeah, well, jo- jolly wally good time. But seriously, guys, the only way I would watch this is if you know I'd had. A- I was drunk. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, well, there very you cool. Go. Walgreens. So in the states, they have a just like a shoppers drug mart like we have up in Canada. Walgreens went from 20 uh, locations to over 500 locations mm-hmm. during Prohibition. Because what would happen is that during Prohibition. You could go to the doctor and say, "Doctor, I've got a stomach ache." No, no problem. You yeah, can get a prescription. Nerve tonic I can get a, you can get a prescription for right. alcohol. Right. So then you go to Walgreens and then uh, get filled out. Uh, why doesn't that work anymore? <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, man. <laughs> These doctors. I think old hip should cover all my can, scotch. Yeah, yeah. Like, all come on, it's cherry flavored for crying all out loud. All I can see is all I can see is Cam sitting there, and the guy's like, "Well, sir, it's gonna take thirty minutes to fill your prescription." Thirty minutes? Yeah. What the hell? It's like, oh, I think I got tennis elbow. Could you prescribe some alcohol for that? <laughs> what? No, of course not, sir. Oh, okay. Sorry, I got lazy eye. Can you prescribe alcohol for that? <laughs> 
<laughs> Look, I could sit here all day. It's not That's like right. I'm employed. And we have nothing over the counter for you, sir. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. What about that codeine? I've been hearing good things about that codeine. There you go. Yeah. So there's some cool things actually that were introduced during Prohibition time because of Prohibition. Mm. All right, so let's go on some Prohibition terms. So we talked about... Uh... Good. <laughs> He's such a rebel cow. I know, like, I, know, I, know, I know, I know, I <laughs> know. So let's talk about some prohibition terms, some slang, right? So let's. See, I'll give you the term, and then you try to tell me what you think it is. So clams. Mm. Yeah, man, I got some clams in my pocket. Oh, it's money. Money. Mm. Yeah, exactly. I'm pretty sure the um, the Flintstones use clams. Yeah, like clams. real clams. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, real clams. Yeah, yeah. You're right. Yeah. I think I've learned that quickly now. Dino, you stole oh. my clams. Oh. <laughs> How about this one? Wet blanket. Man, you're such a wet blanket. Lame. Yep. Someone who is not fun. Well, it's interesting because, I mean, like, I, I don't know that clams is used particularly frequently anymore, but wet blanket, I've used that. Like, Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, yeah true. Be Here's like, more. God, Craig is such a wet blanket. <laughs> 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 so, so, Why are yeah. you laughing? Uh, no, no, no garnish. No garnish. Yeah. What the hell? Craig, get <laughs> take that. Uh, here's, here, here's one you probably want. I don't know if I'm going to get corn shredder. Not Cam. Don't think anything weird out of that. <laughs> Somebody who's like really good at guitar? Like they're shredding or something? I honestly, I have no idea. A man who actually dances bad or awkwardly. Oh, so me. An awkwardly dancer. So you're a corn shredder. There I'm you go. definitely a corn shredder. But I'm a shameless corn shredder. So, That's right. Uh, I'm damn you know. proud of it, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Yeah. Uh, Jake leg. So I've got Jake leg. So Jake leg, what it was, was that back in the days for medicine, there was a thing called Jamaican ginger. Hmm. And Jamaican ginger would actually would help you to help uh, for an upset stomach. If you had an upset stomach, you take Jamaican ginger. Well, yeah, no, and I think ginger is still sometimes used for it that, like for, just as a natural. Exactly. So what ended up happening is that there was alcohol in there. So people what would do is take Jamaican ginger and to j get drunk. All so right. the government picked up on this and said, okay, well, you know what, guys? You have to up the ginger so it becomes intolerable, hmm. right? Like NyQuil, right? When you drink NyQuil, you're like, it still works. Anyway, so yeah, so they tried up the ginger. Well, the company was like, well, we're not going to do that. Then we won't lose all of our customers. Mm. So what we'll do for the inspectors is we'll put something else in there that will trick them to think that we've modified our you know, formula. Mm. Uh, the problem was that it actually caused a numbness in your hands and your feet and to a point where actually your feet were, you can't use your feet anymore. So they replaced so you, alcohol with a stronger neurotoxin. Exactly. <laughs> and so then you would get... Now with thalidomide. <laughs> so then you would get Jake Lake. Wow. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> corporate America. Yeah. There you go. Huh? Or corporate. Cor not corporate America. Just corporate. Just corporate. Just corporate. Yeah. yeah in general, yeah. They're on our side. <laughs> sure. That's what that. <laughs> and the last one. Take the bounce. Um, like, screw off? Get lost? Uh, you get kicked out of an establishment. Okay, yeah, you get no, out and of a bar. like I mean, so now you, we use you, a term now, right? You'll Bouncer. still occasionally hear goobers say, "I gotta bounce," meaning like yeah. I gotta, you know, you gotta get out, leave. Yep, or yeah. the bouncer. Well, on the bouncer, right? yeah, the Duh, term bouncer. Yeah. Stay out of here. So there's some slang there for you from That's Prohibition, cool. huh. and so we also talked about Prohibition. We also talked about Mark's adventures today mm. and the Bee's Knees. Mm -hmm. So we had a lot of information there. So let's tell everybody who we are. We are www.tikicentralcanada.ca. All one word. Dot com. There you go. And on that main page, you will see Mark's Adventures is on there. And he has all the information that we gave him today. It's we'll an be adventure. On there. It's an adventure. I know he keeps on telling me, Craig, I just want to need to go do more research. I'm like, you just want to go and get drunk. <laughs> that's, that's like, uh, let's just face the facts. Come on now. <laughs> Uh, so anyways, yeah, so the picture of me and Cam on there. Paula's got her, you know, uh, picky pears is on there for her. And actually, she's not here today. That's why it's so quiet. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if it's a sigh of relief or a sigh of like enjoyment there or, 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 or celebration. You call it what you want. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> oh, just so joking. We Paula miss you, Paula. There. Yeah, we miss you. There you go. And so, also, so where is she? She's what hot sunny clothes? She oh god, she's in she looked, out, looked outside lately. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. No, during Christmas when it's a storm here, she's sending me videos and pictures like off her dad's, uh, you know, summer house. And it's right on the beach. And the sitting there sucking back rum. Mm. <laughs> and it's like, oh. And she's like, yeah, we're roughing it. <laughs> it's like, yeah. no, you're not roughing it at all. <laughs> In fact, quite jealous, yes. I joke that they'll be the first to go when the revolution comes, but <laughs> I don't know, it just feels a little too apt. So. There we go. <laughs> 
So we also do have our, uh, yeah, so we have an episode page. We have a recipe, recipe page with all the recipes we've done over the years. And also to our subscribe page. So please do subscribe. We don't uh, do use our listeners to, to get basically our voice to get out. And we don't have any, um, you know, commercials or anything like that. So this is why we use subscribers. Mm-hmm. And I think we're going to go off because I think Cam is needing either out of beer or need another beer. We're not quite sure. We'll have to take a tally here and see how it goes. I was just going to slide down my chair in kind of a waterfall style way. <laughs> so that, uh, that works for you guys. <laughs> and I'll go find Mark's garnish. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> That'll make me happy. <laughs> Uh, nothing makes me even happy. Though, even though uh, the drink's gone. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. So we'll go make yeah. some more drinks, guys. Yeah, we'll, and uh, yeah. So I'll talk to you later, folks. Aloha. <laughs> Bye. Take care. Well, I don't know about you, but I got informed. Guys, hey, guys, where's my drink? Uh, but yeah, he does this great like fake morning zoo crew routine where it's like, oh, no hey, it's ass cracking back sack first thing in the morning. Uh, coming up at the uh, quarter, we've got uh, traffic, 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 <laughs> and so far I was just like, oh my god, I remember yeah. this from the nineties. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>